Peter Baldus here, cardiologist. Now today I wanted to focus a video on a condition that is very common in our community known as aortic stenosis. Aortic stenosis affects one of the four valves of our heart known as the aortic valve and as it becomes significant and symptoms develop we need to take action to see what treatment strategy can be put into place. The aortic valve is one of the four valves of our heart. You might have heard of the mitral valve, the tricuspid valve, the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve. Well the aortic valve itself is the valve that takes the blood from the left ventricle of our heart on the left side that squeezes the blood out through the aortic valve at the back into the aorta, this large artery that goes on to supply all our body with oxygen and nutrients. So when the aortic valve leaflets become narrowed, and these are the little tissues that open and close to allow blood to travel out, as that valve becomes more narrow, you can imagine it restricts blood flow out of our heart. Now, what causes the aortic valve to stenose or to narrow? Well, most common it's a condition of advancing age. As we get older, over time, a process known as calcification develops and can affect the valve and that valve can become narrower and can go on to develop symptoms. There are other causes and one is a congenital condition that we've had a video prior called bicuspid aortic stenosis and that is when the aortic valve it typically has three little leaflets that open and close contains two leaflets and that's a congenital condition that you are born with and that can lead to, a con to this condition known as aortic stenosis. Other causes might be infection of the valve or you might have had a condition known as rheumatic fever well that can also target the valve, cause infection, cause inflammation and over time cause calcification and the valve becomes narrower. Now as the aortic valve becomes narrower and you can imagine that that is the key valve that takes blood, allows blood to travel throughout, uh, throughout our body, as that valve becomes more narrow you can imagine that blood is not appropriately delivered through the body and as it becomes you know, moderate and severe, particularly in severe, then symptoms can develop. We know that when symptoms develop and the valve has become quite severely narrowed, then action most often needs to be taken because we know leaving things or delaying treatment can cause a poorer prognosis for, for people. When symptoms develop, now what are the symptoms? Well, symptoms might be chest pain or tightness, similar to a condition that we call angina. You might be short of breath, going up hills, even with minimal exertion. There might be a sense of palpitations and your heart fluttering and racing when you're pushing yourself, or there might be fluid building up or congestion building up around your body. Or it might be just non-specific tiredness and lethargy, getting fatigued, not having the energy and the stamina. So it's important that if these symptoms develop, they are often a sign that the valve has become quite severely narrowed. Now, how do we grade the severity of stenosis? Well, we use various tests and your doctor may have referred you for several of these tests and the more commonly used one is called an echocardiogram or a heart ultrasound. The ultrasound is a very, very effective way to visualize the valve by putting a probe on the chest and using some lubricant jelly and taking some pictures whilst you're lying on the side and that gives us a clear picture of how that valve is opening and closing and the degree of narrowing. When it reaches and we measure the area of that valve less than one square centimeter then that is classified as severe aortic stenosis and we look at other measures of you know how much pressure is building up across the valve because you can imagine as the valve has become more narrower, think about a pipe that has developed rust and corrodes you know, in the stormwater or your, um, your water pipes. Well then, 
pressure builds up in these pipes as the, uh, the pipe becomes more narrow. And similarly, the same thing happens with the aortic valve. As the aortic valve becomes more narrow, then there's a higher degree of pressure that we can detect across the valve on the ultrasound. Now, traditionally, the treatment for aortic valve stenosis is surgery. And that's an open heart operation whereby a surgeon goes in, takes the old valve out and puts a new valve in. And that valve is typically made of a tissue valve. You might have heard of, you know, a, a, a tissue valve made of uh, pig tissue or cow. And also other options include metal stainless steel valves. But these are what we call prosthetic valves that go in to replace your existing valve that has become narrower. Over the last several years, there have been several advances in how we can tackle this condition by performing procedures percutaneously, which means performing them via accessing the femoral artery, usually in the groin, the groin artery, passing some tubes and catheters and stents through the aorta and the aortic valve and putting these new types of stent valves inside rather than having to have an open operation. And these procedures, these stent procedures or these transcatheter procedures really were founded by a pioneer of a cardiologist known as Professor Alain Cribier, who unfortunately we lost only a couple of months ago. Now, Professor Cribier was really a pioneer and we owe a lot to him around the world for being such an innovator in tackling this condition without the need for surgery. And he initially started off with a procedure known as an aortic balloon valvuloplasty. And he initially started off with a procedure using a balloon. And then from that, he used his skills to hone in and develop these stent valves that were actually able to be put through from the femoral artery, from the groin artery internally, while the patient did not have to undergo open heart surgery. And these devices have become quite abundant throughout the world. Many patients have, have had these procedures. And initially, you know, I would say that these were only reserved for those patients who were unable to have an operation or were too high risk to have an open heart operation. But no doubt, as these technologies have improved and as they've refined, and also as we've had time to follow up patients, they are becoming increasingly used for even people who have, you know, a moderate risk of, of surgery. And um, it's always a case by case discussion that the cardiac surgeon, the cardiologist, together with the patient and the family, have to determine whether surgery is the preferred strategy or whether these stent valves might be an alternative option. You know, it's not a given that we can place these stent valves in every patient. There are limited numbers of stents and sizes that are available that we have to ensure fit appropriately your heart and your aorta. We also have to consider whether, the, whether you might have other conditions that affect other valves where you might be better off having an open heart operation. For example, if you have two valves affected, the aortic valve and the mitral valve, then you're often better off having an operation. Or if you have coronary artery disease involving blockages of the arteries, then it may be a better option for you to have bypass surgery together with the valve replacement at the time of open heart surgery. But no doubt, these stent or percutaneous procedures are increasingly being used for many more people, even with you know, low to intermediate risk of, of surgery, and we are seeing very good long-term results. But we still need to consider that these procedures, whether it be surgery or stent valves, need to be considered on a case-by-case -case basis with several tests that need to be undertaken to make sure that we get a good idea as to the suitability of you know, performing one of these stent procedures. For example, if there are major blockages in the arteries of the legs, and that's the, the path that we usually take to put these stent valves in, 
then that might be a challenge for us to do and then surgery might be a better option. But again, the timing of intervention, either surgery or a stent valve, is very, very important. And that's really what I want to focus on today as well. If you have developed symptoms, chest pain, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, feeling like you're going to pass out or, or even fainting, then we need to consider something to be done for you because we know that if we delay treatment, prognosis can be quite limited and, and the decline can be quite rapid in the space of a few years that you might you know, go on to develop significant symptoms and you obviously become at a higher risk to intervene either with an operation or with a stent valve if we leave things until the last minute. So if you have symptoms, chest pain, shortness of breath, feeling lightheaded, feeling like you're going to pass out, and you've been told that your aortic valve is severely narrowed on the ultrasound, then it's important that you follow up with your cardiologist to have a discussion about what are the treatment strategies that should be put into place. Because again, delaying treatment can limit your prognosis and gives you a worse outcome if we wait. So hopefully you found this video useful. Again, a very common condition affecting many, many people around the world. Often a sign, often a condition as we get older, but there are other conditions that we mentioned, the congenital, the bicuspid valve, and then the mainstay treatment strategy, if you do have symptoms and the valve has become quite severely restricted and narrowed, is to look at an operation, which is an open heart surgical operation, or using these um, percutaneous approaches or these stent valves that we can place through the femoral artery in the groin to deliver these stent valves that have really revolutionized the way we manage a lot of our patients now with this valve condition. So hopefully you found that useful. Thanks for all the support. Don't forget to go onto our heartmatters.com website where you'll find interesting articles all about you know, heart wellness and heart conditions. And we've had a recent one on the aortic valve. Until the next video, bye for now.